So in this video, we are going to take a close look at the Nemco controller that has a gigantic wheel to play your games with. <laughs> hey hey, welcome back to the channel, it's awesome that you're tuning in. So in this video, we are going to take a close look at another weird controller from Nemco. So back in the day when we could play some racing games like Ridge Racer Revolution Type 4, we had some weird controllers that we can buy. And one of them was this version for the... Ridge Racer Type 4 game. I'm very curious how this will play. We can also like hold it like this and just use your thumb like navigating or better said like using the steering wheel. We're also going to do a quick teardown but just I just want to see what's in the inside. So we grew up with this controller. This is like the first edition without the analog stick and I understand there are like two versions of this one. This is like the analog edition and because of the analog stick. Uh -huh, Captain Ali's moment. But also the came one with rumble function later on. But what we also did here on the channel, we reviewed the previous model, so if you didn't see it after this video, check it out. Uh, weird control from Nemco again. Like, I love these weird novelties. But let's take a close look at this bad boy, and let's try some games. But before we're going to plug in this bad boy, I just want to do a quick overview of the controller. So first of all, we're going to get the shoulder buttons like with the original controller. This time we're going to get actually like a very nice D-pad. Even for fighting games, it's going to be even way better than this freaking thing with the four separate buttons. It's not really bad. But I prefer like having a normal cross for a d-pad. Then we're going to get the directional buttons. We're going to get the racing wheel of course. Select start mode and that's it. The first thing I did notice like what I love about this thing is like it has a completely different grip. Like it's way smaller than the other model. And I mean with the original controller it's kind of bulky. And for smaller hands I think this thing would even be more comfortable to play. So that's something that we're going to try out because I'm really curious about this thing. And here you can see this thing hmm, is from 1998. Oh yeah, that's some old school stuff. Oh man, what I loved about these devices that we can just plug the games and the controllers in. No drivers, no mumbo jumbo like with Windows back in the day. All right, so let's plug it in. I love that window, by the way. Look at the smile. She is so happy because he's going to spin around in my PlayStation 1. Okay, girl, let's go. There is no power. Oh yeah, your world is spinning around. Okay guys, so let's boot it up. And let's see what we're going to get with the options. Because this controller is specially made for this game. And what I like about it, I can do some reconfiguration if you need it. There is some calibration, stuff like that. So let's take a close look at the menu. I am keep pressing the freaking wrong button. I have no idea why I cannot use the cross. It's not a freaking Japanese version for it, what? Yes, I know. Got the brain fart, a wicked brain fart. Let's press start again. Yeah. Okay, here you can see like it shows the controller. Then we're going to have some different type of way we can play, especially when it comes to acceleration and the brake. So the first two are basically on the shoulder buttons. Here we can put them both at each side. So there are quite some different options here. But we're going to use, let's see, the brake on the left and the acceleration on the right. Yep. Shifting on the D-pad. So that's basically how we're going to play. Okay, so next up we can also do the calibration over here. Here you can see over here that we need to set it up. But there is something not right. Kick here, set the center position and press the start button. So I need to put it on the start and center. And here you can navigate if you don't like swap it out all right so let's see let's use the first soundtrack i'm really curious okay so what is quite interesting with it so basically we're having like a force feedback situation going on here it's such a weird thing because what you're normally having with in the racing wheel we're having this now with this tiny wheel on the controller and I can say like it's such a weird experience that you're having some force that is basically like pushing back with this tiny wheel. And trying to play this game with one freaking thumb is like freaking impossible in my opinion. But this configuration is great. Like let's see if I can do a move or a sliding drift. No, didn't have the speed for it. 
But I can say like the Nemco guys did an amazing job with with this controller. Who came up with this? Like making a tiny wheel that has force feedback in a controller. Yep. I must say I'm getting the hang of it. First of all, you need to get the hang of the Rich Racer games in general, but. Alright. There we go. Oh, the drift was not long enough. But this is absolutely freaking awesome thing to play. Oh, even nowadays. All right, so let's go. Let's do for fun, just do drift. Oh. You can even like see him moving. <laughs> that is really cool, man. That is really cool. Okay, so the next game I wanted to try is Rich Race Resolution. It's an older game, and what I understand is like this game has been released back in the day with the other Rich Race Type 4. So you can see like it doesn't have any support for it. You can still use the D-pad, so that is not a big of a deal. But such a bummer in my opinion that you cannot use this controller in different games or let's say in older games. So here are limited to some certain games you can play with. So that's the question, like how big of a fan are you from the games that you can actually play with this controller? So here you can see like this thing doesn't do anything, but you can still play it with the D-pad. And I must say that the D-pad is amazing on this thing. So let's play it like that. Come on, get out of the way, get out of the way, get out of the way. Oh, crap. This game plays so differently. Or even like the drifting part, such a weird thing. The music in this game is amazing. Okay. Okay, so I promise you will play it around and that is what we're going to do today. So I must say like when you're looking at these old novelty pieces of hardware, it's so freaking awesome. Like you can do so many cool things with it, with some of those controllers and some are like having quite some limitations. And this is one of those examples. I must say that I was quite disappointed to see that we didn't have the option to use this on older games. It makes sense to be honest because these controllers were designed for newer games. And maybe there were some different games that we can play with it. But I just wanted to show it here on the channel what you can do. Oh, it seems to be there having a different kind of parkers. These are like freaking long. Well, let's see if we can remove this one too. No, there is no screw over there. Mm -hmm. Okay, wicked. Doing great. Doing great with the teardown. Mm -hmm. oh, yeah, it's always like fun to remember where the certain screws need to be. Otherwise, we're going to mess it up later on. Alright, so let's do... An opening up because I just skipped the part with it unscrewing all of the freaking parkers okay it's almost like being very gentle because also the first time for me that I'm doing this all right okay guys so this is what we're going to get when the controller has been disassembled so we're going to get the back shell there are some extra plastic some support plastic for the shoulder buttons but there's nothing else over here so the first thing i'm noticing there is like no rumble function whatsoever i think it's not a big of a deal but because we're going to get like a force fit mini racing wheel but how does this thing work so what i understand of i'm looking at this so here you can see that this is the wheel itself so on the inside we're going to get the tooth that connects with the force feedback wheel over here but i'm guessing don't know for sure this is the sensor that basically indicates you can see like which direction you're steering in it and in the inside, of course, like I already mentioned, like the wheels are connected with the force, feed, force feedback motor over here. And the force feedback motor is going to get the juice from here, plus or minus. And that's it. Like, that's basically how this thing operates. Sensor, motor itself for the force feedback. There's no rumble function. Yeah, you just your typical shoulder buttons are over here. My other buttons, yeah, are still attached to the other shell over here. So they are not like separate like some of the controllers are. The cable goes in here, here comes the communication, the chip that basically like translate everything or I'm guessing how it is. 
And when you're looking at the inside, it's a quite an awesome piece of engineering. I must give the guy from who made it ever made this, with Namco made like an amazing piece of technology inside the controller. And I wish like they would make more of these weird things, like the novel things we had back in the days, like in the 90s, 2000s, we don't have it anymore. And yeah, that is why I really appreciate controllers like these. Okay guys, so this controller is just an amazing piece of engineering, if you ask me. But when you're looking at the way how you play it, it's such a fun, like, little novelty. Like this tiny force feedback wheel. How cool is it? Like, if you think about it, like, I can remember that I had some racing wheels back in the day that didn't even have, like, rumble or force feedback, but this controller does. As a child, I never got it, and now I do. And it's such a blast playing and show it here on the channel. Let me know what you think of this. What do you think you for watching? Consider subscribing, hit that little bell, become one of the Wicked family, and I will see you in the next video.